Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Abzan here. Um, this is Ray Wee's deck from uh, GP Singapore, basically. Um, subject to a few budget changes. I'm playing Day of Judgment rather than Wrath. Um, and I'm also running a few different cards in the sideboard. I think I'm a thrown down, um, which I'm replaced with a Lingering Souls. Um, but basically the same list. Uh, pretty nice list. Uh, also doesn't use Liliana, which uh, I don't have Liliana, so gives me a chance to run Absan without it. Um, instead it's running Absan Charm, uh, which is quite an interesting choice. Uh, can do a whole lot, so um, yeah, I quite actually quite like it, but uh, we'll see how it plays out in the in the games. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's get down to it. Um, which I've got for you is against the uh, Jeskai Control deck. Um, used to be a very popular deck, uh, actually one of the top decks in the format. Uh, Fallen down in popularity these days, um, but still very powerful. Um, so let's get underway. So here's our opener. We've got double Goyf, Thought Seize, Path to Exile, and three lands. Uh, this looks like a really solid opener, so more than happy to run with this. Punk's going to lead off with a Colonnade. I think I'm just going to lead off with a Thought Seize. So yeah, swamp into Thought Seas. And so opponent's got a Batascal, a Remand, a Snapcaster, and three lands. Um, kind of a difficult choice here. Batascal's going to be a real pain in the future, but we're a bit of a way off that, which is uh, which is good. Um, Snapcaster's always quite annoying, but at the same time, it's not turn two play, so it's not immediately threatening for us. Um, so I think we're going to take the remand here. Don't really want him to remand our turn two goif if we can avoid it. So I think we just take away the card he can use early, and uh, hopefully these two goifs can uh, kind of shut down the game before this uh, batter skull becomes too much of an important factor in the game. And plays another colonnade. Pretty much assures we're going to be able to stick this goif. It's probably short of a spell snare, I guess, or a pass. She apparently doesn't have. Aether. I get to attack for three. And then I get to run out another Goyf. Turn. Print cracks his Mesa for a Sacred Foundry. And plays an Ajani Vengeant. It's quite an interesting one here. He's going to force the uh, Time Goyf to stay tapped down here. Which means I'm. Not got enough power on the board to uh, finish off the Avenger in one. Uh, just going to search it. Godless Shrine, end of turn. Draw an isolated chapel. Gonna attack the Vengeance for three, down to one, and then we're going to run out the Siege Rhino. I suppose we sh could be worried about Wrath, but I just think it seems unlikely that he's probably he's playing it in the in a Jeskai deck. Um, could have Supreme Verdict, but I don't know if it's particularly worth playing around. And uh, I would quite like to get this Ajani Vengeance off the board if possible. Run drops Batter Skull, which is annoying, but ultimately fine. I'm going to abrupt decay the Germ Token uh, because that means we can now. Kill off the Johnny Vengeant, which also grows our Goyfs, and also get in for the, some extra damage with the Siege Rhino. So we're going to knock our opponent down to eight. Kill off the Vengeant, and then we're going to have four or five uh, Goyfs as well, which certainly makes Batascal a lot less effective. Equally, because we've done that, our opponent um, has a hard time of rebuying Batascal. He'd have to basically spend the majority of his mana. To uh, put, get it back into hand, and then he wouldn't be able to recast it until next turn. So, I probably actually concedes there. Obviously, ran out of gas, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty good uh, game for us. Managed to drop our early threats, and our opponent really struggled to answer those, and uh, that worked out pretty nicely for us. Let's see how that one runs out. Okay, so we've got Thought Seize, Dismember, Path to Exile, Thrun, Double Swamp, 
Temple Garden. So it's a slightly awkward hand. Um, doesn't really have any early pressure. Uh, it does have Thought Seekers. Um, and Thrun is really very, very good against uh, any of these kind of control decks. Uh, so he can't be countered and has Hexproof. So uh, it's very nice. Um, but not a huge fan of this hand. I think in general we're looking to side out most of our uh, removal decks quite removal heavy for more creatures um, and uh, just anything really that can uh, get in there. But yeah, Thrun certainly a very good card. Um, I'm going to lead off with the Flood Strand. We're going to lead off with the Thought Seas. See what our opponent's working with. So our opponent's got Path, Lightning Bolt, and a Restoration a Restoration Angel and a Telling Time. Um, it's kind of a difficult choice, really. Um, I believe I end up taking the Restoration Angel, but looking back on it, I think that's a bit of a mistake, particularly as we have Dismember and Path in hand, um, which kind of makes it between Lightning Bolt and Path. Um, either one's probably going to kill our Scavenging Ooze. I think, on reflection, we probably should have taken the Lightning Bolt. Um, that way he has to pass our scavenging use if he wants to deal with it and that allows us to get an early land um, to uh, cast the Thrun nice and quickly so um, yeah I think on reflection I probably should have taken the lightning bolt but it was the restoration angel I think I took it. His opponent cacks, corrects his uh, tarn, goes get steam vents, plays a hallowed fountain and passes the turn Scavenging Ooze, um, it's never really going to get bolted, but opponent just decides to telling time first. I don't know if I should have kept the hold of the Scavenging Ooze, but it's not doing a great deal, to be honest. Uh, particularly because we have very little green mana as well. Um, so we're going to attack here. I believe our opponent responds with a bolt, which is reasonable. Uh, I decide to eat the Restoration Angel in response. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of value to that, but uh, we do gain an extra life, I suppose. And uh, I was tempted to potentially pass our scavenging news just to make sure we got that fourth land because it was fairly important. Um, we want to be able to cast this run of Siege Rhino next turn, ideally. Um, so it was tempting to possibly pass our own guy there because we're potentially going to be in a bit of trouble if we don't get that fourth land fairly soon. Um, but also, you know, using your removal on your own creatures, it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, just a potential play there to think about. In the end, I uh, yeah, I eat the Restoration Angel and then I thought sees our opponent. So I see Pyroclasm, Path to Exile, and Remand. Uh, kind of surprised by him having sided in Pyroclasm. I assume he sided it in anyway. Um, we do have Lingering Souls in our deck, but I don't think our opponent actually saw it. And otherwise, Pyroclasm isn't really all that great against us. So, uh, a bit of an odd choice for our opponent, I think. Um, and our opponent's got a Path and a Remand. Um, I think we end up taking the Remand. Just because if we get our fourth land, we definitely don't want it remanded and things being slowed down in general. Um, the, the fact that Thrun's uncounterable, maybe we should have taken the path. But Thrun doesn't really care about any of these cards, so I suppose that's not the, the biggest concern. Also, remand's the only way our opponent's going to draw any further into his deck with his current hand, so I suppose it makes sense to just take that and deal with that. Even if our Siege Rhino may get passed in the future. So we crack here. Uh, we end up running out the run. Maybe should have run out the Siege Rhino given that we knew our opponent's hand and it didn't seem like he had the removal. But I suppose Siege Rhino is actually vulnerable to pass. So maybe it's better to just get the throne out there and get the pressure going. I think, yeah, on reflection, I think Thrun probably is just a better, better choice given our opponent doesn't really have much going on. I think we're just best better off just pressuring him. Here I could go for the Siege Rhino. I end up going for the Lingering Souls just because um, if he does have, if he has drawn a counter, 
Um, I think that's obviously a better situation to be him countering Lingerous Shells. I can still get value out of it. Um, I also kind of want him to burn his Pyroclasm, or not burn his Pyroclasm either way. I don't really care, but, you know, I get to make my spirits or not. Seems like a good position. Lightning Helixes, and then Pyroclasms away are spirits. Um, we are down to 9, so that is a little bit scary in terms of our life total. Um, the Siege Rhino can uh, do something to help us on that front, hopefully. So attack 4, put our friend down to 10, and I think we're, we're going to go for this. Oh no, we're going to go for this yeah, Lingering Souls there. Um, given that we uh, know our opponent's only got a path in hand now, I think we're probably going to go for the Siege Rhino. We should have got it for it earlier, really, given that we knew most of the cards in our front hands at hand, and he was unlikely to uh, have a uh, a counter spell. Gossigarda, which could have potentially been nice as well um, against our opponent, obviously Lank's path and uh, other removal uh, spells. So uh, it's a nice one. Uh, just going to run the Siege Rhino here, make sure we don't die to double bolt or something. Uh opponent's going to use his last card to pass it, but it's not going to be enough, and uh, we win through. So, um, yeah, that matchup went very well overall. Uh, from Again, very good against control decks, and uh, just being able to sort of control our opponent's hand and uh, then drop big threats um, it proved very, very good.